Boy, do I have a treat for you guys this week. In this video, I'm taking a look at the web-based writing app Dabble, which allows you to write on, count it, your Mac, your Windows, Linux, desktop, mobile, and in the web. Can it, can it be? <laughs> can it be true? And, and the app says that it is Scrivener minus the learning curve. Let's put it to the test. All right, I'm here inside Dabble, so let's not waste any time and let's just go ahead and get started with a project. Now, as a reminder, we can use this in any web browser. So I'm using this in Chrome right now, but you can use this on Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, doesn't matter what computer you're on or your operating system. All right, so I'm gonna select new novel here. And this is really interesting. You know, this is the first web-based app I've seen that has a page layout. I thought that was pretty interesting. So keeping in our tradition, we're gonna name a, a title here. And we've got our title page and it's gonna be by me. So I think that that works. Now, you may have noticed uh, something happening on the sides of the screen here. I think this is a really interesting feature. So it, it's already populated chapter one for us. But if we start typing, Did you see how the, the the sides disappeared for a minute? I counted, it was about 20 to 25 keystrokes. And I noticed that the, the, the menu bars on the side disappeared. It's almost like a hyper focus mode, which I think is interesting. And if I wave the mouse, it appears again. Very, very cool. Uh, it, it just kind of fades away. Now, the one problem I had with that was that I noticed it kind of fades away when you don't want it to. So there is an option that will allow you to turn that off if that's not your thing. And let's take a look at the word processor. So we've got a bold, italic, and quotes. So, you know, you've seen all this before. You know how this movie goes. Uh, we've got all this here. It's not bad. Um, but I will say that it is a little sparse, right? So I personally, I like to see a robust writing app that's got all the features that people are used to. So bold and italics to me are not quite enough. I'd, like, I'd also like to see centering. Um, I'd also like to see underlining, you know, the, the typical things. But, you know, this is not bad. It's not bad. And uh, I also like that if I go down here, it automatically takes care of my indents. So that's another interesting thing uh, that's also pretty helpful, all right? So that's our word processor. And uh, you know, it's not bad. Um, it's not as strong as some of the others that I've seen in terms of, I still think that this is very small. Uh, I would like to see it zoomed in just a little more, uh, maybe a lot more, um, but but by no means, this is, this is not bad, all right? So let's take a look at the, the right side of the screen here. So, We've got some goals and statistics here. And if I click on this little cog, well, first off, this is a, a nice little uh, a progress meter of how many words I wrote <laughs> for the last 30 days. Now, if I click on this little cog here, this, I absolutely love this. This is fantastic. So you can set goals. So you can choose a word count source. So you can have it be a book or a chapter, whatever your content is. And then you can set your word count goal. We all know how, and we can exclude certain word counts, um, the number of previous words already written that you want to exclude it from your total. That's helpful. And we can set a deadline here. I don't know if I've ever seen this type of feature. This is uh, this is really cool. And then another thing I thought is just absolutely super original. I don't know why no one else has thought of this. <laughs> we can set days off. So if you're going on vacation on the 18th and 19th, you can mark those days out of uh, your your goals, which I think is great, all right? So we can save it here. And then we can also go in, uh, much like some of our other apps that we've seen, we can type in a scene description. So we can say this scene is gonna be called Grandma Opening. And much like some of our other apps in the space, we can type in a description of uh, what this is gonna look like. You know, you've seen this before. This is not uh, anything unusual. And then we've got also what we call plot points. I'll cover this here in a moment, but we'll, we'll call this our inciting incident 
and we'll say it's the opening of the story. And as you can see here, it, it appears here on the uh, on the on the index card. All right. So if I wanted to, another thing I could do down here, I forgot to cover this. I could go into full screen mode. I'm already in, I'm already there. Uh, I could go into focus mode, which just basically it's it's like an auto man uh, like a like a toggle of the the focus mode. Uh, that's just so you know that that's there. All right. So if I f jump over here to the left hand side of the screen, I can filter project files by name if I want to do that. If I click this little plus button here, I can create scenes. I can create chapters. I can create parts. Uh, I can also even add a new book. So unlike other writing apps in this space, this makes use of a universal library. Okay. And I've got some other things that I can add here, but essentially I can, if I want to add another chapter, I can go in here and I can do that and it'll auto number it for me, which I think is, which is nice. Um, you can also double click to change the name of the chapter if you want to do that. So uh, I could also go in now. I, I think another interesting thing I noticed about this is that the chapters are organized by scenes. So that's, that was something that took me a minute to get used to. So this is chapter one, but this is scene one in chapter one. So it allows you to go as granular as you like, you know, it, it's like a Scrivener esque functionality. Uh, I got no problem with this. And, um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to go as granular as you don't want to. So I can minimize this if I want to do that. All right. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the plot. So this is an interesting, it seems like a lot of writing based apps are, are, are hitting this in different ways. So th with the plots here, we can create what's called a plot grid. And in Dabble, a plot grid is made up of plot lines and plot points. I had to sit for a minute and read this just to make sure I could wrap my head around it. But essentially, we've got the big picture and then we've got the little picture, all right? So if I click on this create new plot grid here, I can call this Grandma's a DJ. And then what I can do next is I can actually have a plot line here. So I can have one of my characters here and then I can have, I can create a new plot point and just keep creating plot points kind of like that. Um, and then if I wanted to, I can insert rows and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like that uh, timeline feature in Scrivener where you can, you can kind of drag and drop your index cards and, and they have this nice little timeline feature there. So if you've got multiple plot points going on, you can certainly uh, address it that way. Cool, not something I personally would use, but you know, I'm a big fan of offering any kind of tools that you know were practical. And I think that this is pretty practical. All right, so now we can go into story notes. And if I click on the character tab here, I have an untitled note. So this is pretty basic. I know that the team is working on adding additional things to it. So if I have a character and we name her Eunice, I can just go here and, you know, start typing in things about her, you know, and we can just kind of, you get the picture, you can do character interviews or uh, other things like that. So it's, you know, it's kind of what you would expect. It's the same thing with the world building. Uh, this is all kind of cut from the same cloth. So if you wanted to, you could click on this here and you could scroll down and, and just kind of look at everything. And if you wanted to, you could add new folders and new notes as well. So that's the gist of the, the, the nuts and bolts of Dabble, which I have to tell you guys, I'm really impressed with this. Now, if I go to preferences here, we've got default themes. So I can switch everything over whoa, to a uh, white mode <laughs> or a uh, light mode, I suppose you could call it. And if I go back here, you know, it looks a little bit different. I, I don't have a preference. I think both of them look pretty good. Uh, I think the contrast is on point for both modes. Uh, you've also got uh, the option to choose uh, based on your device. So if your device automatically has a dark mode, it can match that. 
All right, so we got some options here. I just want to make sure we call out. So we've got the options to turn on a spell checker. We've got the options to turn on and off a style and grammar checker. Sometimes those aren't terribly accurate, so you just like to turn those on. But this is powered by Pro Writing Aid, so a huge, huge applause to the Dabble team for pulling that off. I think that's a really great idea. Um, I mentioned earlier with the hyper focus that we can turn that on and off if we want. Some some of you may find that a little annoying. Uh, I, it didn't bother me that much, but it, it was noticeable when I didn't want it to disappear. We've got typewriter scrolling. That's a, a pretty common writing app feature. Uh, an option to prevent the double spaces after a period. Um, we've got a find and replace option and uh, just a couple touch things. And then we've got a data management uh, item here. Now, what I was expecting when I saw this particular scene or this particular feature, I was expecting like an export because that was the one thing I was looking for. And I was like, eh, where's the PDF or the docx or the text export? And it doesn't really allow you to do that. All it allows you to do is to export a JSON file. So, you know, I don't think that 97, 98% of people watching this are going to have a need to export a database with all of their stuff in there. That's just my personal opinion. Um, the big thing that this app is missing is export. You know, I, you got to be able to export to EPUB, to, to possibly to Mobi, to HTML, to PDF, to text. I think that's really important. And the fact that this is missing, uh, I think is a bit of a problem. Uh, I, I hope that that's something that they're going to work on in the future. I know they have a roadmap of uh, different things they're gonna work on, but uh, in my opinion, this would be something that should be the top of the list because here we have uh, the first real viable writing app that exists for all platforms, right? And there are going to be a lot of people, I think, that are going to be attracted to this app, but they don't have Macs. And because they don't have Macs, they don't really have a good ebook formatting tool. And I think that this could serve that need. But that's my personal opinion. All right. Now we've got this little cloud button here on the top that basically allows uh, you to know whether you're your, your stuff is all synced up. I'm gonna jump over to my phone so that you guys can see how this looks on the phone. My only criticism with the mobile version, and I don't know if this is, I don't know if this has anything to do with Dabble, but I did notice that the keyboard isn't quite as responsive as I would like for it to be. So like compared to Scrivener or Ulysses, the keyboard, it lags a little bit and it, it just doesn't, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like when you have a writing app on your phone, like the good ones like Scrivener and Ulysses, they just feel really good. They just feel a certain way. This feels a little bit laggy. Um, so I hope that that's something that can be fixed in the future. Again, I don't know if that's a dabble thing. I don't know if that's an iOS thing. I don't know if it's just because my phone is old. <laughs> but that is something that I noticed and something I would like to see improved if that's possible. Overall, you know, <laughs> I had to ask myself when I saw this app for the first time, I said, have we found the web-based writing app? Because you know, I've reviewed a few of them on the channel and, and they've all been good in their own right. And, you know, I, I have to put Dabble uh, at the top in terms of it being a heavyweight in this space. Uh, it, it has bold ideas, it executes on them well, and it's got great functionality and a good user design. Now, there are some things that Dabble does not have uh, that most writing apps have, and I, I really do think it puts it at a disadvantage. Uh, the first is not being able to align your text you know, kind of the standard word processor stuff. I think that's really important. And also the export, it, you know, it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, being able to export to multiple formats, I think is a critical feature that every writing app needs to have. That said, that's really not the end of the world and probably not that terribly difficult to program. So I do think that eventually Dabble can catch up in these areas where, where its competitors and other writing apps have these features. Um, so. That's, that's a good thing. And also the, the, the developers do have a roadmap where users can vote on the features that they wanna see next. So what I love about this, again, you guys know, this, this is one of the things that I love about writing based apps or writing apps that do this, is that the developers are actually listening to their audience. So if the audience votes on something, the developers will find a way to make it happen. And I think that's all we can ask for. So if you decide to use this app, <laughs> upvote those features that I just talked about. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll happen, I think.
But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about Dabble? Is this an app that you would dabble in? <laughs> Terrible pun. Or is this an app that you would not dabble in and use on a regular basis? Let me know and let me know what your thoughts are because I, I really wanna know what you guys think about this one. So let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.